Hello everyone, welcome back to Craft Aquatic, I'm Matt G. Today I'll be showing you some unedited footage of the 120 gallon mixed reef in our living room and sharing some of my thoughts and how it and the coral are doing along with whatever else comes to mind. Hey everyone, thanks again for joining me today. This is kind of a last minute uh, idea. I was looking at the tank this morning thinking this is a good moment to document some of the coral growth and how the tank is doing generally. And it's something I like to do anyway, just to track my progress over time. You can lose sight of where these coral have come from as far as being tiny little frags and growing into colonies. And also, um, it's hard to critique yourself unless you have some footage of the tank over time. So this is a way for me just to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to keep everything as healthy as possible and comparing to maybe other videos I've made on this channel and stuff that I just kind of keep in my files. Now again, um, this tank has been well documented on this channel so far, so if you're interested in checking out what is going on in the sump, um, the equipment that I use, or maybe some more information on each individual coral, there are videos that I will link to in the description below where you can learn more about those types of things. But for now, we'll talk about where the tank is at today. That Montipora setosa, the orange one, it's for the biggest piece to the left there, is a great coral. It's something I've always loved. It's just, there's something unique about how it branches um, in nubs and just the color in general, the texture of it. And it's the species of coral that will grow big, but it won't grow over other coral. So it's a nice filler piece for a lot of reasons. If you see tucked in there, there's a rainbow Montipora, encrusting Montipora, and that coral will actually grow over other corals. So that's something I'm constantly needing to maintain to make sure it doesn't do that. Down lower here in the tank, we have some Ganaporas. I've been keeping reefs for a long time, and I've been around long enough to know that, or to remember when you could not really keep a Ganapora in a tank. And it seems that the most colorful variety are the easiest to keep. They don't grow fast, they do require feeding, but it's worth it. Uh, in a tank like mine, there's a lot of stony coral. So I like uh, to add specific choice pieces that will add that flowy look, like on the back of the tank you'll see there's a ton of green star polyps which are also referred to commonly as GSP. Right underneath there's a sunset Montipora growing up that overflow. I am one to actually grow coral onto my overflow. It's something some people you either love it or you hate it. They're like avocados, you know. So uh, it's something I do love. One of my other favorite corals is that red dragon that was just center there and this Hawkins Echinata. They aren't easy coral to start. Uh, they have to get used to your particular parameters, but once they're off, they're off running. And, you know, they'll also let you know if there's anything wrong with the parameters in your tank right away. Right in there, there's some um, lords and micromoose lords and um, the OG bounce, which has gotten pretty big. It's the size of a small plate at this point. And there's another one down to the lower right there. I have a few more down in the rack and rubble frag system that I'm growing out to trade or sell. But you know, this is a, it's still a pretty expensive coral, but it's a very easy coral to keep. So if you're just starting out with aquariums or with marine aquariums and you want to get into coral, you know, maybe you want to seek out an OG bounce and, and, and grow one out into a big piece with some GSP or something that, that is easy and pretty. So this 120 gallon mixed reef that is in our living room has been set up for almost three years now. 
It is commonly accepted that three years is a good benchmark for stability in a, in a mixed reef aquarium or um, any type of reef aquarium really. If your coral are growing, you have a regular maintenance schedule, you sort of are dialed into what your tank needs at this point and every tank is very different. So on this channel I talk about how when I am um, explaining sort of what works for this tank, I'm not saying that it will Will specifically work for your tank. This is part of the hobby is to learn what it is that your particular aquarium requires to be the most successful. And for this tank I have a schedule. It's a weekly, uh, bi-weekly, and monthly schedule that I hang behind and I'm going to be doing a video on that very soon. So I'll take you through an entire week of maintenance and what works for me. Again, may not work for you but it works for me. So down here we have this other Ganapora. This I love it. It's got like this bubblegum color. It's beautiful. And that pink one, for some reason, it grows a lot faster than the red one on the left side of the tank. So I appreciate that because I would like to have at least several large Ganaporas growing in this tank at some point. Moving up top, we have some of the tenuous coral. There's the home record to the left there. There's an orange passion to the right. And in the middle, there's an acid trip. And then here, these are wild millipora. The one up top, there's sort of a red, orange, pink color. And then there's a blue one. Um, that one, the red one was growing down low in the tank and I moved it up. It was, it was doing okay down there. I moved it up. It wasn't doing great for a while, but then I changed the flow in the aquarium from some pumps that just weren't, I'm not going to name any names, but they just weren't cutting it. You'd see if you look back in my videos, but, um, I, I decided to go with Tunzies because they are so darn reliable and they don't need constant maintenance. And when you do maintain them, they're easy to pull apart, clean really quickly and get up and running again. So since I've done that, things have turned around in this tank and I'm getting some better growth, some better PE, as you can see in that patinia right there. Um, that Maybe that one has a little too much PE. But it's been working out. The flow was an issue for a while and fixing it brought back some of the colonies that were uh, maybe experiencing some slow tissue necrosis, especially the ones that are, that are tucked out of the, the main direct um, beam of the LED lights above. I want to mention that I'm gonna do um, pretty soon a video about the lighting system on this tank again because I have something pretty interesting going on that I think a lot of people will be interested in. So stay tuned for that. Now you can see around the back of the tank, and I mentioned this also in other videos, that the main structure that most of the SPS and LPS coral are growing on is uh, central in the tank, which is why I don't have a ton of space in front to place lots of LPS on the floor. And I do this because I have some big tanks and it gives them the ability to swim all the way around the central reef structure. It expands this four foot tank to um, maybe more like eight feet when they can swim 360 degrees around it. So not to say that this Nasso isn't gonna get too big for this aquarium. And if he does, I will be moving him. But for now, he has enough space to swim and he's a favorite in our family. So we're gonna hold on to him as long as possible. So you've probably noticed that so far the entire video has been one long shot with no edits. That is atypical for this channel. Usually I do um, a lot of filming and a lot of editing and I'm always trying to get the perfect angle and shot and lighting and all that good stuff. And I really enjoy that as well. But it, it, it is kind of fun to just wander around the tank and give you just sort of like a, a first person view of what it's like when I'm looking at the tank and making sure everything is healthy and if there are any issues that I need to address. So here I just cut to my, did my first cut to another angle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive into the top of the system and do some top-down coral viewing. I turned off all the flow in the aquarium. You're gonna see a little bit of rippling in the water because there are quite a few fish in here and they cause some commotion. 
So full disclosure, I do often turn off all my pumps and view the coral this way. I really enjoy it. It's sort of the way you would look at a reef if you were diving over it. Except for you'd be in the water. But you know what I mean. Anyway, you can see that millipora from the top. It really is a beautiful coral. It's one I haven't sold or shared yet to anyone because it is a wild coral and it does shift color based on parameters and lighting in other people's aquarium. So I don't want them to get the wrong idea if they put it in their tank and it changes. This is a paleta pink tip. Under the blue lights, the, the tips look blue, but they are slightly pink. There's that gold torch down at the bottom. And in a second, I'm gonna move out just so you can see a little more of the color because I'm um, right under the LED lights at this point. Right next to it is a bubblegum digitata and there's a giant scroll coral that I've never fragged. I just let that thing grow and grow and I'm curious to see how big it can get before it starts to infringe on other uh, species of coral. So we'll, we'll, we'll watch that one together. Right down uh, dead center are some green digitata and there's that samacora. Uh, the green slimer that you'll recognize from the intro of all of my videos. The Jason Fox home record, it's got green and red and yellow and pink and blue. I mean, every color you can think of, that's why people love them. The Hawkins Echinata from the top, Pro Coral's rainbow, it's looking a little brown, but still got some red and yellow in there. Here's our huge Capricornus. There's two of them actually. There's a purple rim, green purple rim, and a red. And they're con they have to be fragged constantly to maintain their shape and to not take over the tank. Walt Disney is still looking a little yellow. You'll notice from a few videos ago that I said it had shifted in color. And there's another millipora that was fuzzy and bright blue up until a few months back. Now it's just sort of brown and not fuzzy. I'm excited to see what happens from this perspective. There are a couple nice torts and pearlberries. There's the original Aura pearlberry straight down. There's a frag of it there. And to the right a second ago was um, a wild pearlberry variant that is actually kind of nicer than the Aura that I have. So we'll see what happens. I'm not the kind of reefer that is overly controlling of what the coral does. I am, however, very controlling of my water parameters and I do my best to maintain perfect water quality. As far as the coral is concerned, I want it to settle in the way that it needs to settle in best, and that seems to usually be the best thing for them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That's pretty much it for now. Please do leave a comment below. I love hearing your thoughts and ideas. If you like the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.